Thanks for joining us, Paul. Um, now, Hi, Paul, tell me a bit about the history of the Slamdance Film Festival. How was it first formed? Slamdance was started in 1995. Um, that was a year that Sundance, the Sundance Film Festival, which we loved, we were 12 directors who had our own films who did not get into Sundance. So we went to Park City, where Sundance takes place with our own films, and started showing our films on our own and called it Slamdance, uh, the year of anarchy in Utah. And the Hollywood press loved us, so uh, they kept talking us, talking about us. And we kept doing it year after year. And this year was our 24th year of showcasing very small American independent films, uh, you know, budgeted, you know, way under a million dollars, usually no movie stars. And um, this, is, this was our 24th year. Uh, the reason why it started really was in 1995, that was the year that um, uh, the Walt Disney Company bought Miramax, Fox Searchlight created a division called, um, uh, well, Fox created Fox Search, Searchlight, and Hollywood basically saw that there was uh, money to be made and business in American independent film, mm -hmm. and um, it left, Sundance started leaving out these very, very small first-time films and filmmakers. So, Paul, what makes a film an independent film? Well, that's a, a you know, there's a broad range for that today. Um, I think originally uh, independent film was um, a personal story, uh, a film by somebody who uh, came up with their own story, financed the film themselves, uh, maybe with their own money or money from family, um, cast the film with unknown actors or their friends, and uh, successfully made a film that was poignant. And sometimes those films were f able to find a little bit of distribution and stood out. As that grew, um, I think independent film is, has come to mean uh, more than just that small film. Um, now there's, there's uh, uh, it, it's really the independent voice now. Mm -hmm. You know, people with a unique sense of storytelling, uh, stories that aren't as developed by studios or outside entities other than the director and the writer. Um, I think all of those can be claimed to be independent films, but um, it's certainly uh, big budgets, small budgets, big actors, famous actors, yes. non-famous so, actors. It, it's, Paul, it's much bigger. which film in the Slamdance Film Festival this year stood out to you the most? Well, there was a beautiful film by a NYU graduate student called Fishbones, um, which was a very, uh, this filmmaker, Joanne Mooney, reminds me of a female version of Hal Hartley, who was a, uh, a very independent filmmaker in the 90s, discovered by Sundance. Um, her film is very serene. It's about love and friendship and... Um, a lot of there's only 22 shots in the whole mm -hmm. film and wow. it's 90 minutes so it, it's just every shot is just so beautiful and complements your story and i was very impressed by that film that um, seems really interesting that, now paul yes. i really want to find out a bit more of the initiative slam dance on the road tell me a bit more about that well slam dance on the road is uh, Slamdance is not able to physically grow that much in Park City. Um, Sundance is really a behemoth, and we coexist with them, but they really have most of the theaters, most of the venues. We have two movie theaters. So years ago, we started taking the films on the road. So we screen films uh, all over the world, mainly the United States, but all over the world. We have a screening series at the Arclight Cinemas in Los Angeles and Chicago. We play films at the IFC Center in New York City. And then uh, we book films in different cities uh, around the country. Uh, the Alamo Draft House is a movie theater chain that supports us, and they have theaters in, in many cities across mm -hmm. the United States, Dallas, Houston, Austin, um, I think in Miami, 
uh, Brooklyn, New York. So we're able to take these small films out on the road to find more audiences. And we also distribute them uh, digitally through, uh, you know, Netflix, Hulu, iTunes. Well, Paul Rockman joining us there from Los Angeles. Thank you so much for coming on our show today. Okay. Thank you very much.